Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video. Guys, in this video, I'll be comparing Hadoop with the databases. We all are aware that Hadoop has a storage called HDFS and database is also used to store the data, but how they are different and why we are going towards the uh, specialized kind of storage with the likes of Apache HBase. Let's get started. We all are aware that with the, with the help of Hadoop, we can store the data in a cluster with the help of HDFS and we can process it with the help of MapReduce. But why we require the separate architecture for database management? If everything is, is available with us, that why we are going towards the Apache HBase? We all are aware that databases are at the uh, heart of most of the applications with include, uh, which include email applications, uh, bank account applications, sales and payroll applications. And databases which serves these applications uh, also perform something called as transaction processing. And we all are aware that databases uh, stores the data in a form of tables, rows, and columns. And what is transaction? A transaction uh, involves inserting, updating, and deleting data, or it can be a combination of these three operations. We all are aware that uh, like when we are transferring a money from one, one's account to another's account, it's also a transaction because the money got deducted at one end and it got credited in the other end, right? So transaction, but the transaction processing has got certain requirements. On the other side, Hadoop has few limitations which makes it unsuited for transaction processing. So we have to explore these limitations why Hadoop is not meant for or not used for transaction processing. Let's get started. The very first point is unstructured data. Second is no random access. Third is high latency and fourth is not asset compliant. We'll discuss these four points one by one in detail. First is unstructured data. We all are aware that behind the scenes Hadoop stores the data in a Hadoop distributed file system which we abbreviate as SDFS and data in the SDFS is unstructured, right? Unlike the databases, SDFS data doesn't have any schema, any structure, so there's no concept of schema or structure in the case of SDFS data. Uh, because the SDFS data basically it's available in the form of files which includes text files, log files or audio video files. And there is no concept of rows, columns, and there is no concept of tables as well. If we go further, and we can also say one thing, like this is not to say that Hadoop cannot be used to store structured data. Because we have certain mechanism available, we can store our data in a structured format, even in the Hadoop, with the help of the files, which are CSV files, XML files, and JSON files. Because these three files exhibit some kind of structural pattern. We all, not we all are aware that uh, XML files and JSON files comes under the semi-structured data, but we, they do exhibit some of the structural behavior. Each record in these files, can we can treat it as one row in a table. But unlike databases, Hadoop will not enforce any schema or any constraints on these rows or tables. We all have studied in the case of uh, traditional DBMS, like we have a certain constraints available, like check constraint, not null constraint, right? Primary key, foreign key and all, right? So if we can go to next point now, no random access, very important in the case of transaction processing. Applications which do uses the databases require the random access, that is uh, its ability to create access and modify individual rows of a table, but uh, it's not available in the case of Hadoop. So Hadoop doesn't provide you the uh, random read write access. If an SDFS file consists of many rows in a table, there's no provision available to access or modify a specific row without processing the entire file. So this is a, a clearly a limitation in Hadoop, right? Which uh, makes it unsuited for transaction processing. Third point is high latency. All the processing in Hadoop occurs via MapReduce task on complete files. And even on the large clusters, these tasks might take minutes or hours at times. And we all are aware that Hadoop is uh, more suited for the batch processing and the batch processing usually take time, right? It's not the, we cannot use the Hadoop for those applications which are time constrained, right? So th this is a, another problem we are having in the case of Hadoop. And the fourth point is not the asset compliant. Asset stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. The databases guarantee asset properties to maintain the integrity of a data. It's very important uh, property as far as the databases are concerned. We all have studied in our DBMS uh, class like that uh, the databases has to like uh, all the transactions, all the databases has to exhibit this asset properties, right? But the SDFS being just a file system, file storage system has no awareness of the structure and content contents of a data. This is another uh, like, clearly a limitation of SDFS, like it has no awareness of, of the schema or the contents of a data. 
so all these four limitations makes the hadoop unsuited for transaction processing on the other side that's why i've said at the very beginning that's why we are going towards the specialized dbms which are columnar oriented database which is apache hbase because apache hbase offers you these all the features which are missing in the hadoop like uh, which includes random redirect access it's available in in the case of uh, apache hbase it also give you the lesser latency and all so right so these are uh, this uh, uh, like we, uh, we comes to the end of this video uh, i hope guys you must have understood uh, the points like what's why uh, the hadoop is different from the databases and why we are going towards the specialized databases dbms with the likes of apache hbase thanks for watching guys see you next video